Well, good evening. Good to see everyone here tonight, and uh, we'll let folks kind of get into their seats this evening, and I uh, hope you received either a uh, real candle or a battery-powered candle. Uh, we figured that those seventh grade and up could hopefully be responsible enough <laughs> not to burn the building down. Um, I was told that the reason why it was raining tonight was to put out the fire. <laughs> Some of you get that a little bit later. Um, but for the younger kids, we have the, uh, the small battery-powered lights, and so uh, all of the young kids can get those. If they haven't got them, we, we have them in the back. And uh, once we get ready to get started with the service, we'll have some of the ushers come down. And basically, they'll just light the candle on the outside of the row. And uh, then you can help the person next to you uh, get the one lit as you keep going down into the row and things like that. Uh, so the ushers will just light the candles on the outside. We do not have uh, a nursery, the normal type of nursery tonight. Uh, because we'll, we're going to be having the kids come up here in just a second. But uh, the nursery is available if you need to, to use it. Uh, if you need to take uh, one of the kids out or something like that, the nursery is open. You can use it. Uh, but please don't leave your kids back there because there are no workers back there. <laughs> All right? So if you're, if you're taking them out to make use of the nursery, uh, please make sure that you stay back there in the nursery uh, with them. All right? And uh, so at this time, I think we're going to have, um, we'll go ahead and let the young, if now what we do is we invite all the young people to come up, all the little kids and things as we read the Christmas story together. Um, and if there are teenagers that like to come up, they're welcome to come up as well. I will say this though, uh, if teenagers or adults, if you, if adults need to come up and sit with their kids, you're more than welcome to do that also. Uh, that's not a problem at all. We're just going to kind of sit around here on the platform. Um, and as we read the story together and then sing some songs. Uh, but if you do come up on the platform, whether you're a teenager or adult, uh, we would ask that you don't bring the lighted candle uh, up here uh, as that might be a little bit difficult to try to handle kids and hold a lighted candle at the same time. And uh, so that would be great if you'd help us by not doing that, all right? Uh, but we'd love to have you come up. And so uh, at this time, and I... Uh, I see we're still having folks come in, and that's, that's great tonight. Uh, at this time, if we have any of the kids that want to come up tonight, if any of the young people would like to come up, uh, we're going to have you come up. My wife and I will be sitting over here in these chairs, and so the young people, they can just kind of fill in uh, anywhere you want. So we'll go ahead and let them come up at this time. All right, and they can have their little, they can have the little battery-powered lights. That's great, the candles. Yep, you guys can, some of you can sit on the steps, some of you can just kind of all around here. There you go. Yep, some of you can sit right here too. Sit so you can see us over here. Not, you don't want to see them over there, right? They all think they got to sit up in the choir loft. All right, why don't you, Ms. Jenna, why don't you guys just sit right here? You want me to turn it on for you? No, I'm going to give it to my mom. Okay, you can go ahead. Go right ahead. Absolutely. You say, you seem kind of disorganized tonight. No, this is a casual service tonight, all right? So where there is no organization. Well, I mean, we do have a little bit of organization, uh, but this is great. It's great to see all these young people. Wonderful. This is awesome. Very good. I guess they wanted to make sure that they could keep an eye on you guys out here. Yes, they're, they're checking, make sure you guys are going to be singing. Now, you probably don't want to sit behind, I would say probably from Miss Joy. You guys back here, if you want to come back around on this side over here. Yep, come back around here. There we go. You made it back. All right, great. I'm really fast. You're really fast. That's, I can tell. I can tell you are really fast. I know, they're way back there, and you ran all the way back there and came back so fast. All right. Very good. This is great. How many of you, how many of you guys up here, how many of you guys are ready for Christmas? 
Are you guys ready for Christmas? All right. Yes, very good. All right. Well, what we're going to do to go ahead and get started, there's a few more seats out there now with all the kids up here, uh, but we're going to start off with a song, and uh, we're actually going to, before we do that, if we could go ahead and have the ushers, if you could start making your way down the aisles, and we'll have you guys light the candles on the end. If you prefer not to have a candle lit, that's fine. That's not a problem. We are going to turn the main auditorium lights completely off, um, so it will really just be more of a candle light. Uh, service tonight, and so if you prefer not to have uh, your candle, <laughs> wow, guys, <laughs> yeah, we do have the uh, the little drip things on there, so that's great. There's somebody next to you that doesn't have. They're candle lit. You can help them. Okay. He's going to be fast again. All right. Of course, we also want to welcome those joining us via live stream tonight as well. I will say, (laughs) I will say this being here is so much better because you get to just experience the whole thing. Not just what you see on camera, (laughs) right? Very good. All right, we got all the candles, all the candles lit and everything. Well, guys, we'll go ahead and hit the lights. We'll have the auditorium lights turned off there. All right, very good. We'll just keep the track lights on. Well, that's beautiful. That's really neat. That's beautiful. All right, we're going to start off singing uh, a Christmas song, O Come All Ye Faithful. The words will be up on the screens And uh, then after that, we'll jump right into the reading of the Christmas story. did such a great job singing that and uh, they did a good job out there too. But we're going to go ahead in the start in the reading of our Christmas story tonight and we're going to start in the book of Luke chapter number two. And I know some of you young people could probably quote this whole chapter or the whole Christmas story probably. We're going to read through it together a little bit and then we're going to break in a few places and sing some Christmas songs that kind of go with Uh, that part of the story. And so we're going to start here. It says in Luke chapter 2, in verse number 1, And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus. Does anybody know who Caesar Augustus was? Does anybody know who Caesar Augustus was? Mr. Levi, do you know who Caesar Augustus was? Well, he he was like the king, right? So he was the king. He was the king of that time and his name was Caesar Augustus, and he says that all the world should be taxed, right? So he was bringing in a taxation, and this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria, 
and all went to be taxed, everyone into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea unto the city of David. Does anybody know the name of the city that they went to? You forgot? What, where, did, where did they go? Do you remember where Joseph and Mary had to go? What city they had to go to? Miss Haley? Bethlehem. That's right. In fact, we have a map up here, and you can kind of see Nazareth is way kind of up at the top of the map there, and they had to walk all the way down to Bethlehem. In fact, that was over 60 miles they had to walk. Can you imagine walking that far? And it wasn't on really straight, nice roads, right? That would have been taking a long time. And think about what else was happening during this time. Think about Mary. Mary was pregnant, right? Mary is pregnant and she's going to have a baby. And it's not easy to walk a long ways when you're pregnant, when, when ladies are pregnant. And so they had to take a, a while to get there. And so they were probably traveling for a couple of weeks. Can you imagine walking for a couple of weeks to get to Bethlehem? But that's where they had to go. And that's what it says. They went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea under the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. What Christmas song do you think would go good with that part about having to go to Bethlehem? Mr. Isaac, do you know a Christmas song that would go with that? What about, O Little Town of Bethlehem? Do you know that one? How about we sing that song, O Little Town of Bethlehem? a great song. Let's go ahead and continue with our reading here. It says, and so it was that while they were there, remember where they're at? They're in Bethlehem. The days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger. Does anybody know what a manger is? What is a manger? Anybody know what, you don't know what a manger is? A kind of crib, that's right. It was, a, it was a place where they would actually put food for animals in, like a, in a stable, in a barn. And that's where they laid this baby in the manger because there was no room in the inn. Does anybody know what they named this baby? Do you know what they named this baby, Miss Chloe? Jesus, that's right. They named him Jesus and they laid him in a manger. So let's, how about... Uh, do, you got, do all of you kids know the song Away in a Manger? You guys think you could sing that without the adult singing it? You think we could do that? Yeah. 
Let's try. Let's try just the kids singing Away in a Manger, right? We'll help you, okay? Ready? Here we go. Away. on the hay. The cattle are lowing, the baby awakes. But little Lord Jesus, no crying he makes. I love the Lord Jesus, look down from the sky and stay. You guys did a great job, and I know some of you, it's, some of you haven't learned to read yet, and so you were singing that from memory. That's great. Well, let's continue with our story here. After we've sung Away in a Manger, they wrapped him in swaddling clothes because there was no room in the inn, right? It says, and there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. You guys think you would be afraid if an angel, all of a sudden you were out there with the sheep, and this angel shows up, and he just, he just appears? How many of you would be afraid? I would be afraid, right? But these shepherds, they were afraid too. They were afraid of this angel. And the angel said unto them, fear not, right? Fear not, because they were afraid. For behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. He says, I've got some good news. He says, I'm going to tell you some good news. Now, I know we think a lot of times we know what good news is, right? Good news is uh, it's Christmas morning and we get to open presents, or the good news is uh, we get to go to McDonald's or something like that, right? But this was even better news than that, right? There's a lot better news than going to McDonald's, right? I'm telling you. But he says, we have good news. He says, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Now, why do you think that a Savior had to come? Does anybody know? Why did we need a Savior? Why did we need a Savior? Miss Kaylee Ann? To save us from our sins, that's right. Because we're lost in our sins. We all have sin, and we all need a Savior. And that's the good news that the angel wanted to tell the shepherds, that a Savior was born. And so let's, how about we sing the song, uh, Joy to the World, right? Let's sing that song. Okay. Joy to the world. Let's see. 
Wonderful that we're able to know that a Savior is born because we all need a Savior. But think, how many of you up here tonight are five? How many of you are five? Five years old. How many of you are four? How many of you are four? Oh, we have some that are four. Is anybody up here three? Is anybody up here three? Oh, you got a couple three-year-olds. How about two? Anybody up here two? Maybe a couple two-year-olds, right? Very good. But think about it. This was a baby. This was a baby that was born. And this baby is our Savior. Do you think he was a Savior as a baby? Or did he have to grow up a little bit? He probably had to grow up, didn't he? That's right. He was going to grow up. And he was going to become a man. And he was going to die on the cross so that he could save us from our sins. And that's why the angels called him our Savior. A savior. Well, let's keep reading here. It says, after the angels told them about the birth of Jesus, this is what they said. Hey, welcome back. Well, that's not what the angels said. That's not what the angels said. No. The angels said, and this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with an angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, good will toward men. So not only was there one angel, but now there was lots of angels. And guess what the angels were saying? What, what were they doing? Anybody know what the angels were doing? What were they doing? They were singing. That's right. They were singing and they were praising God because the Savior was born. That's right. That's what they were doing. And they were saying, glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. How about we sing the song, It Came Upon a Midnight Clear. Some of you might know that one. angels sounded really good when they were singing. Do you think they did? Yeah, I bet they sounded, I mean, this sounded pretty good tonight with you guys singing, with the adults singing, but I bet the angels sounded really amazing. With all of those angels singing, it must have been so beautiful. Well, let's keep reading here in our story. It says, and it came to pass as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which is come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. Do you guys know what the word haste means? 
It says when they came with haste. What does the word haste mean? Do you know what the word haste means? It means like you're in a hurry. That's right. So think about it. Those shepherds were out in the fields, and the angels told them that a Savior was born, and then it says they came with haste. So do you think that after they decided to go look for the baby, do you think they just kind of walked along slowly? What do you think they did? Do you think they ran? I bet they ran as fast as they could, right? They ran as fast as they could because they wanted to see this baby that had been born. Do you know that shepherds needed a savior and kings need a savior and everyone needs a savior? And so the shepherds realized who this baby was and so they ran to Bethlehem to see this baby and they found Mary and Joseph there uh, with the baby and the baby was in the manger and what do you think the shepherds may have done when they came in? Anybody know? What do you think when they saw the baby, what do you think they may have done when they came in and saw baby Jesus? What do you think they did? What do you think there, Mr. Price? They worshipped him? I bet they did. Do you think they, do you think maybe because they were so excited, maybe they were, maybe they started crying a little bit, maybe tears of joy, so excited about this Savior, this baby that was born? How about we sing the song, What Child Is This? What Child Is This? L-A-U-D, not loud, but laud. Do you know what, when they, it says they bring him laud, does anybody know what that means? Anybody? Do you know, Miss Kayleen? Gifts? No, not gifts. Miss Joy? Worship, it means praise. That's right. They were worshiping him. They were praising him because he was Christ the king, right? And even in the song, it talks about him being the king of kings who has come to bring life to and not just, again, not just for shepherds, but for everyone, for kings. Okay, all right. You go right ahead, buddy. You are in charge tonight. <laughs> Absolutely. How about... <laughs> I didn't hear that. What did he say? He said he's in charge. <laughs> That's great. Uh, oh, I guess I did say that. I apologize. He's going to go home for the next few days. Pastor said, I'm in charge. Pastor said, I'm in charge. Well, let's keep reading here. Whoa, we got a runaway flame. All right. It says, and when they had seen it, who had seen the baby? Who were we talking about? 
the shepherds, that's right, the shepherds had seen the baby Jesus. And it says, when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. What do you think that means when it says they made known abroad the saying? What do you think that means? What did they do? After they, after they left, they left from where baby Jesus was, what do you think they did after they left? It says they made known abroad the saying. Do you know? They went and told everybody about him. Would you think they were telling them about what the angels told them? About that the angels said this was the Savior, Christ the Lord? You think they were telling them about the baby that they had seen in the manger and about who he was? Yeah, they were telling uh, everybody. They made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child and all they that heard it. So everybody that they were telling, all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen and it was told unto them. Do you think it's important that what the shepherds did when they went and told people about the baby that they had found? Was that pretty important? It is. That's right. And you know, if we, if we know about that baby and that baby is who? Who's that baby? Do we know who the baby is? Baby Jesus. And baby Jesus is who? Who did the angel say he was? You remember? Who did the angel say baby Jesus was? Do you know? The Savior, that's right. Man, that's important news, isn't it? And so that's why they went and were telling everybody. Now, if we believe that Jesus is that baby, and if we believe that Jesus is the Savior, then what do you think we should do too? What should we do if we believe those things? Yes, sir. We should believe, that's right, we should believe that Jesus is the Savior, but what else should we do, Miss Katie? We should do like the shepherds did, right? We should go and tell other people about Jesus because he's the Savior and he's the only one that can save us from our sins. And that's what the shepherds went and telling everybody about the Savior that was born. And that's why we celebrate Christmas, that he was born and he's our Savior. But we know that he grows up to be a man. And what does he do when he's a man? Does anybody remember? What does he do as a man? You remember, Chloe? He dies on the cross. Why do you think he dies on the cross? Do you know? Why does he die on the cross? Because of our sins. That's right. And he dies on the cross to take away our sins. And that's why if we believe in Jesus and ask him to come into our heart and save us, then he will give us everlasting life and he'll become our savior. And that's what the shepherds went and told everybody. So how about we sing, how about we sing the song that talks about going? How about the Christmas song called Go Tell It on the Mountain? Can we sing that one?
good. Now, before we end tonight, I do want to obviously address all of you who are here tonight listening to the Christmas story as well. And I know we try to involve the children and the young people in this, uh, so it makes it special for them. But just as what we were explaining to them, whether you're watching via live stream or you're here with us tonight, Jesus Christ was born for a purpose. Jesus Christ did not begin in Bethlehem. Jesus Christ is God. And Jesus Christ was willing to leave his throne in heaven and to come to this earth and be born in a manger. And just as the angels said that he is a Savior, because we need someone to save us from our sins, because every single one of us is a sinner. And I know we try to do good things to try to make ourselves think that we are good enough to go to heaven. But the Bible is very clear that there's not one of us who is good. Not one of us who has done enough good things to be able to earn God's favor. It's not about joining a church or it's not about uh, being good or keeping the Ten Commandments or anything like that. Because if, if it was about those things, then Jesus Christ would not have had to have been born. If it was about something that you and I can do, if it was about being part of a church or uh, keeping the Ten Commandments or getting baptized or something, then there would be no need for Jesus to come because we, there's something that we can do. But Jesus came because there is nothing that we can do. The only thing that we can do is put our faith and trust in Jesus Christ. And my friend, if you're here tonight or you're watching via live stream, and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior, my friend, that is what Christmas is all about. As we think about even these candles that we're holding, and the purpose of, of light is to dispel darkness. Jesus Christ is the only one who can truly dispel darkness. Uh, Jesus Christ is the light of the world. And when we put our faith and trust in Jesus Christ to save us from our sins, the Bible says that He will come into our heart and forgive us of our sins and to give us that gift of eternal life. You see, that's the whole story of Christmas. That Jesus Christ, who is God, became a man so that we could have our sins forgiven through His death and His burial and resurrection on the cross so that one day we will be able to be with Him for all of eternity if we put our faith and trust in Him. So my friend, if you're here tonight or you're watching via live stream, you don't, know, you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior, we would be so happy to take God's Word and show you how you can be saved. To know that Jesus Christ is your Savior is the greatest, the greatest decision you can ever make in your life because the greatest gift that's ever been given is Jesus Christ. And we'd be happy to take God's Word and help you to know how you could be saved. But tonight as we conclude our service, why don't we sing the song Silent Night as we conclude, and then after we're done, we'll end with a word of prayer, and then we'll let you blow out your candles. Hopefully, they're not getting too, too short yet. Um, we, did, we did test them first before we had the service to, to know how long they would last. But why don't, we, why don't we stand together, if we could, tonight as we sing Silent Night. You guys want to stand up, too? You guys can stand up tonight, too.
tonight. Let's pray, okay, guys? Let's pray together. Our Heavenly Father, we do thank you, Lord, just for being able to gather together and just worship you and think about what you have done for us in sending your Son, Jesus Christ, to this earth because we needed a Savior. And Father, we're, you're so good to us. We are so undeserving of your love and your mercy. And yet, you loved us so much that you were willing to send your Son to die in our place to save us from our sins. And so, Father, I pray that you'd help us, Lord, even during uh, these next few days as we continue looking forward to the Christmas day, Lord, that we would truly remember and think about what Christmas is about. And Lord, that it's about what you have done for us. And Father, again, if there is someone that has never accepted Jesus Christ, they've never accepted that great gift of eternal life through Christ, Lord, I pray, Lord, that tonight you would help them think even about some of these songs that we sing, about the message, about the, uh, the verses that we've read in the Christmas story, about what the angels said to the shepherds that night, a Savior is born. And Father, I pray, Lord, that you would help us to look to you during this Christmas time and just thank you for what you have done for us. In Jesus' name we pray.